Imagine 3,000 feet in the air. No ropes, no harness, no safety net. Just you and the mountain. This is the world of free solo climbing. And in this world, one climber is on top, Alex Honnold. If you're seeking perfection, free soloing is as close as you can get. At 33 years old, he's broken records around the world. Last year, he set his sights on the impossible. El Capitan, a 3,000-foot vertical granite rock face in Yosemite National Park. El Cap is the most impressive wall on Earth. It's 3,200 feet of sheer granite. It's the center of the rock climbing universe. Obviously, I get interview questions about it all the time. Oh, would you like to do that? And you're like, yes, for sure. His epic journey is the subject of a new National Geographic film, Free Solo. And then people who really know exactly what he's doing are freaked out. Put that in some better perspective for me, if you can, because a lot of people that are going to be watching this might know your name, they might have heard El Cap before. When you think of like the Empire State Building, you're like, it's two and a half times as big or something. It's not just that. You're talking about sheer size there. But you're, you're climbing up almost a flat sheet of rock. Yeah. So how far back would we have to go till you finally got to a point where you thought, OK, this actually might be something I, I can do. As a kid, when I would go camping and looking at the wall, I mean, it looks immense, you know? It's like un unfathomably huge. It took me years to sort of wrap my head around the idea of that being possible by yourself. There was like a moment in 2015, actually, and I specifically remember the first time that I was climbing on El Cap where I was like, hmm, I could sort of imagine doing this without a rope. Alex spent the better part of two years prepping for his free solo ascent, practicing the route with ropes. Every detail, even every hand and foothold meticulously planned. One wrong move on the climb could mean certain death. And then you drive up off the left foot into the thumb press. That's the worst hold on the entire route. In some ways, it makes more sense to do the big two-handed jump because you're jumping to a good edge, so there's actually something to catch. Inevitably adding to the stress of the climb, Alex agreed to do it all with cameras rolling. How much of that preparation was also getting used to camera crews? But on the actual day of the solo, we had all sort of refined our, our processes to the point. It was sort of perfectly done. As Alex is moving up the wall, you are literally shooting next to him and tracking him. And as he climbs past you, you need to then put your camera equipment away, clip into your ascenders, and move up the rope into another position so that you can shoot him again. For husband and wife filmmaking duo Jimmy Chin and Elizabeth Chai Vassarelli, this film was a technical challenge and a personal one, as evidenced in this new behind-the-scenes footage. Alex is doing a few laps on the top part of Freerider, and we're just rigging and actually scouting some of our locations um, for when he solos it. So. Everyone on our team sat with this risk, sat with this commitment, and kind of entered into this circle of trust with Alex and ourselves. Filming Alex Free Solon is extremely emotional. It's very taxing. It's, it's very scary. The film pulls back the curtain on the danger and the tension of their endeavor and the inherent danger for everyone involved. I put my foot on this, what looked like part of the wall, and a piece about the size of a small backpack launch. And Jim is below me, Dave is below me. That flew like right here. And then another one went like right here. The foremost challenge in everybody's mind was like the risk and the risk of death. When he told us, I want a free solo El Cap, we actually took a step back. You know, we had to answer some very tough questions for ourselves. What was the first moral question you had? What's the effect of the filmmaker on the subject? And if it causes him to die, or it pushes him to do something that he wouldn't normally do because there's a camera rolling. Okay, everybody knows what to do if something goes wrong. Who should Mikey call? 911, and that, that wheel will get kicked into gear and tell him what you know. All right, no mistakes tomorrow. How did you deal with that question, can we live with ourselves if something happens? It comes down to that idea of like a life well lived. I'm a professional climber. I know the mindset. We believed in his ability to do it, but we also knew that 
if we were going to do this, we, we also had to execute perfectly. While training, Alex also enlisted the help of friend and fellow professional climber Tommy Caldwell. Everybody who has made free soloing a big part of their life is dead now. I've had, you know, 30 or 40 friends that have died. You describe <laughs> breaking off a handhold and a little slip. Those things would have resulted in your death. You call it risk and consequence. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You describe that. Explain that to us. So uh, I like to separate risk and consequence. Consequence being, you know, what will actually happen if, if, if you fall. So, I mean, when people say that the free soloing is risky, I'm like, well, not all free soloing is risky. I mean, some of it's super easy. Some of it's as easy as walking on the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. But it's all very high consequence. So that's what you do. You mitigate the risk as best you can. Because once you're up there, mm -hmm. you actually feel pretty confident that you Yeah, I mean, are. ideally, yeah. And I, I think that's part of the appeal of free soloing is to take something that seems fundamentally scary and to make it feel comfortable and controlled. The film also explores whether Alex is simply built differently than the rest of us, able to make the impossibly dangerous impossibly normal. Several ex-girlfriends say that I had like personality disorders or things like that. Is my, is my brain intact? Your brain's intact. So an interesting thing, do you have no activation in your amygdala? Do you think my amygdala actually just doesn't work or something? Your amygdala works, it's just that it needs a much higher level much of stimulation. Stimulus. Things that are typically stimulating for most of the rest of us are not really doing it for you. I took that to mean that basically over time I've sort of desensitized myself to a certain kind of stimulus. You know, I've been climbing for over 20 years and it used to be, a lot of things in climbing used to be quite a bit more scary for me. And then over time, you know, I've gotten used to it, I've gotten desensitized, and now I feel quite comfortable. The emotional toll on Alex's friends and family in the lead up to the climb is at times difficult to watch, especially when it comes to his girlfriend, Sonny McCandless. It's awesome. <laughs> Pretty much makes life better in every way. It's really hard for me to grasp why he wants this. What if something happens? <laughs> How did you prepare differently? Did you find that it was a different experience being in such a serious relationship this time around? I mean, the reason it sort of worked out is because Sonny, my girlfriend, sort of just told me, you don't need to break up with me to, to climb. She was kind of like, you can have both. And in some ways, it was the first time that had really been presented to me. I was like, really? Like, can I do that? One part that really stands out is when your girlfriend is sitting by herself in the car and she's in tears. Like, why does he have to do this? I mean, that's hard to watch for sure. You know, it is really hard to do something if you know that the somebody that you care about deeply is going to be so affected by it. Um, and certainly when I watch the film, I'm like, oh, I didn't know it was that hard for her. In the end, against all odds, Alex overcomes heartache and injury and accomplishes the impossible. And he does it in less than four hours. We were on the edge of our seats watching Alex make his way up El Cap, achieving something no human had ever done before. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, oh my God. I'm so glad this is over. Will you ever give up? Free soloing? Um, you thought about retirement at all? But yeah, if I'd never do anything more grand than El Cap, I'm like, that's, uh, I'll still be honored. Is this the greatest uh, feat ever accomplished in climbing? Oh, I mean, I think, yes. I think it's one of the greatest athletic feats of any kind, ever, really. I mean, perfection or death, it's very, Unbelievable. You got a front row seat for it. Yeah. It's got to feel pretty good. It yeah, was beautiful. It was amazing. I mean, it was, it was absolutely beautiful. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.